Now let's go ahead and talk about cutting some rotors. The first thing we need to know when we're cutting rotors is there's basically two different types of rotors. There is what they call a hubbed rotor, which this is right here, and then there's a hubless. We'll do the hubless in a second. This is a hub rotor. We know that because the bearing races are integral with the rotor itself, those machine surfaces there, okay? So when we mount this on the lathe, we want to mount it the same way it would mount on the vehicle. I want a tapered surface to contact this machine surface here and a tapered surface to contact that surface as well. So I'm going to find a collet that fits inside there and contacts that tapered surface like that. So I'm going to put that collet on the lathe, okay? Now I'm going to put my rotor on the lathe. I'll grab another tapered surface that's going to mount on this bearing race here. It's a little bit smaller race, so it's a smaller collet. Fits up like that. That feels real good. I need a spacer to take up the area between uh, the, the length of the arbor, if you will. Now I'm going to use my Hunter Quick Nut. Now notice the Hunter Quick Nut has a deep side. Notice how deep the threads are in there. And there's a shallow side here. Okay, now if you look at the arbor, I'm going to need the deep side. I've got a little bit to take up. So I'm also tightening. You'll notice that's a left-handed thread. I'm going left, lefty to tighten instead of righty tighten. Okay. Now when I do that, I'm just going to tighten it like that, hand tighten only. Okay. There is a tool here that's provided with the lathe. That tool is designed to be used to loosen the quick nut only. Okay. If we took that tool and bear down on it, what it would do is it would put so much clamping force on here, it would deflect that arbor, and that would give us run out and give us a potentially a bad cut. Okay. So the tool is for loosening only. Another thing to note, notice I only have one spacer in here. We could use different cones and stack them up, but we want to avoid that as much as possible because there's always a chance of stacking tolerances, more material to get in between those. So go with this one if we can use it. There are other spacers and combinations we can use, but this worked great here. The other thing you want to remember is we want to keep the workpiece as far to the right as possible, okay? If you think about it, the farther it hangs out this way, the less stiff things are. Things are more rigid as we get closer to the bearings over here. So this is a great setup for this particular piece. Now we're gonna talk about a hubless rotor. This is a hubless rotor right here. You can see it's hubless because we don't have the bearing races included in the rotor itself. All right, and this is gonna mount differently on our lathe. I wanna take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the old style cups versus the new style cups or backing plates. So this is one of the old style ones. Notice it's just a cast piece. It doesn't have a lot of mass to it. Well, mass helps us avoid vibrations and dampens the vibration. So you'll notice this new style piece here is much heavier. In addition, it has this rubber band around it that also additionally helps absorb even more vibrations. So I'm gonna use that whenever I possibly can. All right. So now what I need to do, go back to my, my rotor here, and I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna find a cone that fits inside that. This one does well. So I'm gonna mount that on the lathe. I'm going to turn my workpiece and mount that on as well. Grab my outer cup here, if you will, slide it on. Grab a spacer. Make sure my rotor is now on the cone. Take my wing nut, threading it to the left to tighten it, okay? Tighten it up, and there you go, okay? Now again, a couple of things to note. I didn't use a tool to tighten this, and I've got my workpiece moved as far to the right as possible. All right, so now we should be ready to go. Now before we go ahead and, and cut this, there's a very important thing we need to take a look at here, and that's the minimum rotor thickness. So generally you'll see somewhere on this piece, it will be cast, and this one, it's actually on the edge here, but it's rusted, so it's very difficult to see. You can also look this up. Either way, we have to verify that we're not going to make this too thin when we're done cutting. So we need to check that first, otherwise we could be wasting our time, okay? So once we've proved out that this is going to be thick enough, then we can go ahead and perform the cut. Okay, now let's talk about a hubless style rotor, of which I have one right here. It's called a hubless style rotor because there's just a hole in it. There's no uh, machine surfaces where the bearings go. This basically just slides over the hub. Okay, so we have two different ways we can mount this. We can mount this with a cone, or the way I'm gonna do it right now, which is with a chuck. Okay, and this chuck has three jaws on it, and these are gonna expand as I turn these keys here, and they're gonna center the, center the rotor on the lathe. Okay, so what I'll do is I basically just install the chuck on the rotor like that, let gravity work in my favor. I'm gonna turn the key 
to center it up. You can see it kind of pull itself up, get it nice and tight. And that's basically it. Now they're connected together, right? So now I walk this piece over to the arbor, slide it on the arbor. Again, using my heavier backing plate there. Use my spacer and the quick nut. And again, I'm gonna use the deep end of the quick nut, turning left to tighten it. And we're ready to go.